Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make this awesome invisibility glitch effect featured in the new Quavo 1111 music video that dropped last week. This is a great After Effects project to try yourself because you're gonna learn a ton about masking, tracking, and track mats. And that may seem like a lot, but trust me, it does not require a lot of legwork to pull this off. The project file and assets for this tutorial will be available on my Patreon, link down below. I also used my new texture bundle for the glitching. If you wanna find that, a link to my digital store is at the top of the description. So let's hop in and get started. So the secret to making this effect work is to gather a clean plate of your background footage without the subject in frame. Before you had to shoot twice with a tripod to do this, but now we can do this easily with Photoshop AI. So make sure you download the Photoshop beta version to access their new generative AI fill feature. Next, we're going to hop into After Effects to prepare our footage for the invisibility effect. So find the spot where you'd like the invisibility effect to start. We're going to go up to composition, save frame as, and I'm going to save this as a Photoshop layer. So now we'll open up the Photoshop beta and we're going to go to file open and we're going to open that Photoshop layer file that we just saved from After Effects. So now what I'm going to do is just grab my lasso tool over here and I'm just going to draw a little outline around what I want to cut out. You'll get prompted for this general fill and if you leave this blank, it's just going to fill this based on the rest of the image. So it's kind of like a content aware fill. So we'll just click generate and you'll see just like that magically removed. And I mean, this is amazingly good compared to what content aware fill was. You can even click and you're going to get some different variations. Uh, but I mean, he's just perfectly seamlessly erased from this image, which is great. And there's so much that we can do with this now that we have this clean plate. Now, if you want, you guys can also use this generative fill tool to like add extra things. So if I do like a circle here, I could click generative fill and I could say birdhouse on tree as you see now we have the birdhouse in there so yeah great tool we're just going to use it to get this clean plate so once we have this we're just going to go file export and we're going to quick export as a png and then we'll hop back into after effects and we can drag in that clean plate which is right here so you see we can toggle this on and off let's drag the clean plate beneath our actual footage and we're going to set up our invisibility effect so now what we're going to do is we're going to isolate the subject from our normal footage because we want only him to be invisible and we can do that easily with the rotor brush tool so just double click on your footage once you've done that you should be in the layer right here you can now go up and grab the rotor brush tool which should be in the top left we'll just do a little scribble here and you see we're already getting an error it's wanting us to uh, change the frame rate to match the source so we can fix that easily just by going to composition comp settings and it's saying it wants 25 frames per second to match the footage so I can also hold down alt to bring up the red brush and you just want to get this purple line around the subject so pretty simple all right, so that's pretty good. We can refine this later. You just want to click the page down key on your keyboard and that'll move you frame by frame. So I'm going to do about two seconds of invisibility. We can grab this bar here to set the duration for how long we want to freeze. And then once you have that all blocked out, if you want, you can control alt mouse wheel to zoom in to see that a little bit better. Once you have that all blocked, we can just go ahead and click this freeze button. So now After Effects is going to freeze out this section and mask out only what is within the purple lines. So once that's complete, we can click back over to the composition and now you should be able to see our masking in effect and you're not actually seeing anything because we have this clean plate showing underneath. So let's remove that and there we go. So we have this transparent background for about two seconds. So I'm going to find the spot where we go back to normal right about there. I'll click Control Shift D just to split. Uh, this, this is just for cleaning purposes. I'll rename this to invisible and then I'll rename this to normal footage. Now what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the invisible layer and we're going to go over to pre-compose and very important here make sure you select the second option move all attributes into the new composition this essentially just takes all these effects applies them all and turns it into a fresh layer so if we click this you'll see the effect controls are empty uh, it also turns it into this full layer we can just go and make the cut where we know this ends so control shift D. So now that that is pre-composed and locked in, we're going to search under effects and presets for the CC glass effect. And we're going to place that onto the AI clean plate layer. Let's go up to our effect controls in the top left. We're going to change the bump map here to our invis comp one. That's the layer that we rotoscoped out. And to see this better, let's go ahead and just hide this layer at the top. Now for the settings here, we're going to have a softness of six. We're going to have a height of 31, and then we'll keep the displacement at 100. You can also go over to light and I like bumping up the light intensity to 250. 
just so you can see that a little bit better. If you're going for full on transparency and being able to see through something, CC glass is definitely the best option. In a little bit, I'll show you how to only have the lighter shading on the subject. For now, I'm going to show you two other alternate methods to the invisibility effect. If you don't like the look of the CC glass, you can also do this with a displacement map effect. So let me delete CC glass so we can start from scratch. So just search for displacement map effect under effects and presets and then drag that in. And we're going to, in the effect controls up here, set the displacement map layer to the invisible comp. And then to actually see this better, we can hide the visibility of the invisible comp just like this. And now we can just mess around with the settings up here and you're going to see our invisibility effect. If you don't want any of this screen tearing, just make sure you check on wrap pixels around and that should fix and that should fix the issue. You can play around with any of the different channels here and any of the different values. It's going to give you a different look every time. So for example, I can go with the green channel. I can go with blue. Yeah, that's how we can get our invisibility. Pretty simple. Now you'll notice here we have an issue where it's just floating away and that's because we need to actually track this AI clean plate. This is just a still image. I'm to turn everything off again. This is just a still image we rendered from Photoshop. So we'll track that and fix it in a little bit. But before I do that, I do want to mention some other options you have for the invisibility look. This displacement map effect comes stock with After Effects. But if you want something a little bit different, you can grab the Red Giant Chromatic Displacement Effect. I'll leave a link to that down below. If we drag that on there, again, do the exact same thing. We're going to set the layer to the invisible comp. And then we can go over to Displace Amount and just crank that up. And you'll see we get something very similar except you get this sort of chromatic aberration that also comes in with the displacement and then you can change the softness there too as well. Again, that's a paid plugin. If you want a free alternative to this, you can also look up the Displacer Pro plugin, which I made a full video talking about. So that'll allow you to add some chromatic aberration to your displacement. So now the only thing that we need to do is actually make it so that the AI plate is tracked with our normal footage. So this is what the shot normally looks like. There's some handheld movement going on not shot on a tripod. So I'm going to go ahead and click control D on normal footage here just to duplicate it. We'll go up to the effect controls and delete the roto brush. So we're completely starting from scratch here and I'll rename this to track normal footage. So we're going to track this footage, but before we do that, you can see this composition is like 30 seconds long. We don't need it that long. So I'm just going to trim the comp just by grabbing this little bar here. We'll right click and trim comp to the work area and we're going to only track this section. So now that we've done that, we can right click on this footage. We can go to the track and stabilize section and we can click on track camera. So we'll go ahead and let After Effects do its thing and gather all this tracking information. So if you ever run into this error, it's because whenever you 3D track, you need to make sure the composition is matching the layer size. So we'll just go back up to the project bin here and we'll take a look at our original footage and it's saying it's a resolution of 4096 by 2160. So I'll go up to composition, comp settings, and I'll set the resolution to match the footage. So we'll click OK. And then we can right click and just transform fit this to composition. Now when we go back to the effect controls and we select the 3D camera tracker, you're going to see our tracking data and we won't have any errors. So what we can do from here is we can just click on this create camera button and that's going to place this 3D tracker camera into our composition and then to have the other layers actually follow that camera tracker, we just need to toggle on this 3D layer switch. So make sure you're clicking toggle switches and modes to actually see that. Select all these layers and just toggle on the 3D layer switch. So now we can right click on the AI clean plate and we'll just fit this to comp because again, we size this up to match the footage. And there we go. We now have the movement matching, but we still have a still image in the background. If you want to actually have the original footage in the background in case there's different things moving, we can do that just by rearranging some layers. So what I'm going to do first is just right click on all of these and just make sure that these are fit to the comp. So transform fit to comp. We only actually need this part of the AI track because that's what's showing the forest behind. So I'm just going to click toggle switches and modes and I'm going to track mat the AI clean plate to our invisible comp. So if I turn off the chromatic displacement, it only looks like this Again, exactly what we need. You can turn back on your displacement if you'd like. And now we can just take our normal footage that we were working with earlier. We'll just extend it back out and we'll just drag it all the way so that it's underneath. And again, with that normal footage, you may still have a roto brush in the effect controls. You can just delete that and it should go back to normal. 
So now you have everything tracked together. You still have that footage behind. So if there's anything moving in the background, you'd still see it. And you still have your invisibility effect right here that you can control from the AI clean plate. If you want to create a transition where your subject turns invisible, you can just click T on the AI clean plate layer and you have your opacity here. If I set that to zero, see it's back to normal. So I can set a little keyframe, move a bit, crank it back up to 100, and he's going to gradually turn invisible like that. So that's useful for transitions. And then to get rid of these edges from the 3D camera track, we can just create a new composition here. So we'll go to project. Down here, we'll click create a new comp. And I'll just make this one 1920 by 1080. And I'll name this final comp. And then we can just drag in the composition that we are working with. For me, it's just called comp one. Just drag that into final comp, transform, fit it to comp. And then if it has any of these issues here, you can just scale it a little bit. So there's that. The rest of this is just going to be customizing and adding in some more effects like you saw from that original music video. So how can we make this look a bit better? Things like adding in some glitch or just color grading to make this pop a bit more. So we'll pop back in our main comp. And if you want to, again, this AI clean plate, this controls the invisibility. So you can go in and add something like a curves effect onto there. And you can use this curves effect or any sort of color correction just to make this look however you want. So if you want it to sort of pop out from the background a bit, you can maybe just make it a bit lighter. You also can control and keyframe the displacement amount. So as you keyframe your opacity, again, it's going to fade into this, but you can also keyframe the displace amount if you want to control that and sort of like have some sort of animation as it does this. Same with the soften displacement layer. You have a lot of different controls for animating it in or out or however you want to do it. If you want to add in the glitching, I actually made a bunch of these in my new texture pack that just dropped on my website. I have some of this pre-rendered glitch footage, so I can just drag this into the composition. And then I can just drag this underneath the AI clean plate. We'll go ahead and fit this to comp. Now what we can do is we can actually track mat the glitch to just the shape of the isolated subject. And again, we can do that with the track mat pick whip. We'll place it onto the invisibility comp. So now this glitch will only be shown in this area. You can even drag it above if you'd like and then just change the blending mode to something like add. To make that show a bit better, we can add in a glow like we did before. Again, just raise the radius a bit and we can use curves just to make them brighter. So there we go. Now we have this sort of glowing glitch. And then finally, a little pro tip here. If you want to change the glitch, but you don't want to redo all the glow, all the curves, all the track mats, things like that, you can go over to project and just drag in any different clip, drag in glitch five this time. And what you can do is hold down alt. And while you're holding down alt, you can drag that over top of the layer you want to replace. And it's going to replace in the glitch and still keep all the track matting, all the formatting, all the effects. So that's an easy way just to kind of experiment with things. Uh, and it's a great little tip to know just for After Effects in general. So there is our invisibility effect. There's a ton of really cool things you can do with this. Essentially, you just need to get that clean plate, which we're doing now with AI, which I think is probably one of the best things that AI has done for filmmakers, given us the ability to do something like that. It's so useful for compositing and you don't have to do crazy effects like this, like invisibility. Um, I know that they did this masking effect in there and that's using the exact same principle setup where you get the clean plates, but instead of adding a displacement map effect and doing all this track matting, you could just animate a little mask so that it wipes away the clean plate and reveals what's underneath. So there's so many different applications for this. I hope this taught you something cool, but also it taught you a bit more about After Effects and what you can do when you control the layers using things like track mats, using things like tracking, using things like your clean plate. Again, the project file for this is available on my Patreon. It's going to include the CC glass version as well as the displacement map version. So you can pick and choose which one you like best. So as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting and I'll see you guys in the next one.